I'm not sure if, uh, as a fan of the show, you might... You I can't wear it on stage tonight, but yeah, okay. amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> What's the crack? Welcome to this week's episode. My name is David Kelly, I'm the Irish Guy Vlogs. And in today's episode, I'm in Kilkee, County Clare. Spider-Man. But in today's episode, I'm in Kilkee, County Clare. And the reason I'm here today is because of the Marquee by the Sea. And the Marquee by the Sea is a music festival that they've had here for the past couple of years. And last night and the night before, the Marquee by the Sea was on. Last night, the Blizzards played. And the night before, De Laurentos played. And a couple of weeks ago, my friend Mary told me that her boss was managing the Marquis by the Sea. So she said, if you want to approach him, like, he might be up for letting you do a video. So I asked him, and he did. And this is the video I made. And I just want to thank my friend Mary for doing that. She was really nice. And she didn't have to do that, but she did. So thanks a lot, Mary. Also, I had the opportunity to interview most of the band. So I interviewed De Laurentos. It's slightly vampiric as well, because you take the blood out of the first two producers. Blizzards, well, Brezzy from the Blizzards. They're not cooking meth now, are you? No. <laughs> it's just like, geez, I'm not a fan of that. And uh, Liam Geddes. Probably the biggest for me was probably Hudson Taylor because they kind of started off where I started off. And they were all really nice guys, really good interviews, and I'm happy with how it turned out. I've been here in Kilkee for the past two days. My friend Claire let me use her house. She donated her sofa and let me keep my equipment and stuff there. Thanks a lot, Claire, for letting me stay, and uh, and thanks for giving me a hand with the equipment as well because I, I really did need it. Also, if you can't tell by my face, I'm a little bit hungover. Over. It's now Sunday since Thursday night. I've had about 12 hours sleep in total about four hours each night And I've had great crack and I hope you enjoy watching the video And I hope you have as much fun watching it as I had making it. So uh, yeah, let's go So I just arrived at my friend Claire's and I have my tripod, my cameras. I'll show you my big camera. What I'll be shooting with today is my black magic. I have some lights. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm excited. I'm just keen to get it done, you know. It's my first time doing an interview like this and it's just, you know, I'm, I'm looking, really looking forward to it. So it's De Laurentos tonight and then Brezzy and the Blizzards tomorrow, hopefully. I'm gonna go down and set up in about 10 minutes and uh, interview De Laurentos. I, I've tried to like research a little bit about them. I've tried to like dig into their past and I got them a little gift as well. So I hope they like it. I'm not gonna show you what it is yet. Yeah, it's a cool little thing and uh, hopefully they, you know, they appreciate it and hopefully they appreciate the questions as well, you know. And I'm just excited now to do it. So I'm gonna get the rest of my gear packed. So I guess I might as well We'll introduce the interview now. So this is De Laurentiis, Marquis by the Sea 2019. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, so yeah, I'll do that. So uh, you're both from Dublin originally, aren't you? We are. Well, no, originally I'm from Cork. Oh really? So, but we grew up you in Dublin. Be, be, just be pedantic. <laughs> I'm just going by what's, you know, yeah. the line yeah. you're on and you kind of... Don't believe any of it. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. That's kind of worrying now because I'm yeah, not sure. like everything will be... A lot uh, yeah, false. Yeah, true sure <laughs> fake news. Or, yeah. Yeah. But what do you think of the West Coast? Is there a different pace of life or...? Well, there is definitely, yeah, a different pace of life. It's slightly slower, which is amazing. Um, and more, you know, it's stereotypical you can say it's more chilled out. It was definitely a bit wilder in a nice way. Have you played any gigs here in the West Coast? Yeah, no, it's, was yeah. It our first gig outside, like the Roisin Dove in Galway, was probably one of the first places that yeah. gave us a gig outside of Dublin. Outside of Dublin, we played the, the Cush Farga uh, eleven years ago, just over here. We yeah. played a lot up in Bundoran when we first started, in tr a lot in Kerry as well, like Tralee okay, and. Tralee. One we did uh, Tree Surrender with a guy called Tommy McLaughlin who okay. produced uh, uh, some of Villager's early stuff and kind of played with Connor kind of gigged with him for the first album. Yeah, um, I, so. I suppose we've kind of done two albums, like we, said, we did our first couple of albums with, with Gareth Mannix and then we did a couple of albums with Rob and um, I think it's just kind of just for freshness and new, new, yeah. new ideas and new experiences it's, yeah. it's nice to just we never want to make the same album twice if we can avoid it so it's nice to, to to work with new people and I think as we've got gotten older and more we get we get easier and, and more excited by maybe like you know, taking a few risks or trying different things you know yeah, yeah it's also it's slightly completely. vampiric as well because you take the blood out of the first two producers and then you take all the things that you've learned from them bring it into yourself go to the next producer learn from them we knew more about what we wanted as we went on mm, and so um, 
uh, Tommy was great, perfect for that. Yeah, well, I think you're right. It's it, like it, it's brilliant creatively, and it's yeah. it's scary. But I think that's like, the way we make our music. If it, like you know, people who know us will know there's four songwriters in the band, and every album process is kind of scary because you don't really know. We start out a process and nobody has any idea or really much control yeah, over yeah. what the end product is going to be. Um, so, and, and I think that's been one of the things that has kept us doing it. Everyone has got their own personalities yeah. and fingertips in the music, so it can be pushed and pulled in different ways. So that's 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 exciting and interesting. It's, it's nice different. Event. We can't really do it unless you, unless it's vital. And I suppose yeah. so. Every every album has to be vital and has to be capture that, that the time period you know for it to be worth it and for you know yeah. we have to really feel it and be passionate about it if, if anybody else is going to be well I have an answer for this actually uh, I, I know, know I'll, I'll have you, you, it's you, not going to be what you think oh isn't it oh, oh sh so when, uh, around the early 2000s you know mad into music we listened to the Arctic Monkeys a lot when they kind of came out uh, I was a really big fan of Idlewild so we listened to a lot of future heads at the start and within a year or two of starting, we'd supported the three, those three bands. And like, I was such a fanboy, like, you know, for Idlewise, watching them, like I'm playing with them, you know? And uh, Future Heads, like, they were on the cusp, you know, it's, it's hard to remember, but on that first album, they were absolutely huge, you know? And played this big gig in the, in the Ambassador, and we supported them, and like, and those kind of things are, I just, I mean, we play with big, like bigger bands than those, yeah. but those at that time made a made a big impression. I think. Mm. Yeah. But one thing is that they won't answer our emails about <laughs> our uh, second album, "You Can Make Sound," which the track listing is backwards on Spotify, and they just won't change it. And I'm like, so everyone comes in and listens to the final track, and then it, it goes. You know, yeah. reverse order to Secret or whatever it is on the first track. You know, it seems to, people so. seem to like it, but it's yeah. like. So they're taking creative license themselves. Yeah. Putting I like that. Something, they're adding a layer, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah. Um, re release, you know, that's, yeah. that's it, yeah. <laughs> Release it on purple vinyl. Yeah. Part of the reason we want to make music is to experience it with people and, you know, like, you know, we're playing a gig tonight and hopefully the room will be full and that's what makes it. But you kind of don't have any God-given right to to that audience or to any yeah. sort of, you know, the, to the commercial success. As Kieran was saying, you know, we try and be true to ourselves and then do the best job we can of spreading the word that, that we exist and, if, you know, we hope that enough people Go to the gigs, oh, buy yeah, a t-shirt. That they, yeah, that it, it that resonates that with them, you know. Like if someone came up to me and loved the, uh, you know, our music didn't have any money, I would give them an album. Now, you. don't come up. <laughs> <laughs> don't hit the, no, but you know, I prefer that you just... I wouldn't do that. Just let's just be clear. <laughs> and then get cash off. Yeah. You mentioned that like for destruction. So would you be a Guns N' Roses fan? Would you be... I am not a Guns N' Roses fan. Um, so I brought you a gift, and that's why I was asking kind of Guns N' Roses if you like it, because in an old interview I saw that you like that you wanted to play in Rock in Rio. That was one of the things that you said. Oh yeah. And um, one of the best bands I know, I know to ever play a Rock in Rio is Guns N' Roses. Oh my God, so it's all you, coming together. It's not, it's not amazing. It's, I know you like guitar. Oh wow. Well. A tiny little Guns N' Roses guitar that you can just oh, have, class. just to say thank you for doing the gig, for doing the interview. And, it's, it's right. It's right-handed, so I can't play it. I'm oh, lefty, but um, it's in tune. It's in tune. <laughs> Can you hear that? That's lovely. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. Thanks for doing it. Oh, this is no bother. I just wanted to say thanks. And yeah. I know it's yeah. not much, but yeah. totally. I'm going to the practice space. That's it. It's perfect now. Yeah. Nice one. so tired honestly got barely any sleep last night i think about four hours and then about four hours last night as well delorinto's are really good though they put on a really good show there was a decent crowd there and they were really nice guys to interview as well i'm not sure if they're watching this but if you are thanks a lot for doing the interview i appreciate it and i was just flicking through instagram just now when i saw on delorinto's page that they put up a picture of the of the gift that i gave them yeah it was just pretty cool that they liked it and you know they shared it and stuff i thought that was nice i'm looking forward to the interview with the blizzards tonight i hope it's the full band i'm not 100 percent sure if it will be should be good though. I'm excited about it. I'm gonna get ready and head down there soon. I'm just so tired. I need to eat and just muster up the energy to, to do this and to focus. That's the most important thing. 
Just focus. Um... I got my drink last night. Should I go back in? I've noticed these all over Kilkee. They're like the signposts. They've got like knitting on them. I think it's really, really cool. I've seen loads of them around the place. They're really cool. Like, here's another one. They're really cool. And there's another one. I wonder what they're for though. Do they keep the poles warm in winter or something like that? Poor poles. Oh, so I'm taking a break from all the walking around and shooting and stuff. Got myself a nice little cone. It looks radioactive because there's so many sprinkles on it, but uh, I'm going to tear into this. Hmm. To be honest, I don't care if it's radioactive, it's, it tastes so good. You jealous? Got like sprinkles in my beard. You can hear the bands warming up in the background. I'm here with Niall Brisbane of the. Uh, is it okay to call you Niall? Or Whatever you want, man. Have you came here before or you just visited? He played Kush Farragha years ago at the, the festival. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, we, we were. We, I think it was the first Kush Farragha we played. So I've been here and I've played here myself. So and I've been down here many times. I've swam in that sea. I've done some triathlons and stuff around here. So yeah. I know the area quite well. I did an Ironman a couple of for two years, three years ago. It was alright. I think the training's tough. The, the hours, the hours and the commitment stuff. Yeah, a lot of prep. But I have to say, I, um, I'm not sure I'd rush to do another one. But it was definitely worth giving it a shot. No, I didn't in Copenhagen. Yeah, nice and flat. Oh, okay, okay. See, I always thought that. They and it did them in the warmer countries, you know, with like the Well, Copenhagen was 33 degrees. Really? Yeah, the, my biggest, I remember at the end of the race, the biggest problem wasn't the, my legs, was the summer. Absolutely scalded, it, yeah, yeah, no sun cream on or anything. So, so, yeah, oh, no, like it was, like, but it was, no, it was, um, Copenhagen is also really flat. So, for a lad my size, right. having a nice flat cycle was the, was, yeah, was the way forward. Easy. Yeah, yeah, big time. <laughs> has the potential to do an inordinate amount of uh, positive uh, influence on our society, but it also has the potential to absolutely decimate and turn, make, you know, Black Mirror look like Peppa Pig. If we don't yeah, regulate this and make sure that it's used for the right reasons, and, and my fear is that at the moment, the potential powers that be don't seem to be using their powerful influence for, for good. Uh, there's certain people in the world who, who have that capacity that will, will, will try to honor what this can do in positive ways because it could have huge positive impacts on health and stuff like that but also I, I looked at the last uh, European elections general uh, elections in Ireland and nobody mentioned AI we were at the cusp of a new industrial revolution where this world is going to change based on, almost unrecognizably and no one's actually talking about this stuff we're lucky in Ireland we don't have also that really really overly divided culture now we're seeing in the UK and maybe in America, especially in America, we have this really divided, quite angry binary culture. Into extremism, man. Yeah, it's extremism. It's, 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 it's frightening. But in Ireland, I think because of our colonial past and our history, that I, I think we've, I think, I think we've enough, enough in our heads. And also we've gone through two of the most important social movements our country has seen through the marriage equality campaign and repeal where we really recognize where are we at as a nation and where we're at is now generally a very open-minded liberal nation. But rather than shout at the people who aren't that, I want to talk to them. I want to figure out why, and that's my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. Ah uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a massive pop fan, like good pop music. I was raised in ABBA and Boney M. I think also at music, music has become quite based around algorithms and yeah. how can we appeal to a certain mass market who will like this stuff. It's very easy as a musician to get sucked down that road. We were never a band that were super appealing at a mass market. And that sounds terrible. Like when we first came out, the indie scene was big and we were kind of an anti-indie band. We didn't like it. We didn't like the superiority complex that indie had. It was like, we're cool, I'm a cooler than everyone else. Uh, I didn't like that, and we never liked that, we never fit into it, and we never wanted to fit into it. I think the, the industry, since we kind of took a break for a few years, has changed dramatically, and, and it's, it's, it's it, thank, thank God it's kind of found its feet again, because obviously the internet destroyed it for a while. And What Spotify is good for, it really allows bands who potentially could, who wouldn't have been able to tour, 
like there's bands who could release something in the Ukraine yeah. and all of a sudden they go well actually I can go and play in Dublin there'll be 200 people in Wheelands that's good that's nice I like that that's all Spotify it's certainly not a revenue tool uh, but it certainly has a really important place in music we can just keep getting angry that people do illegally download music or we can go right we have to change and move with this and that's the thing a lot of industries are now getting angry because they're all oh, the internet's destroying us they're like lads you got a warning shot 15 years ago when it destroyed our industry so um, if you're still worrying about it, that's your fault. What happened was I went back to study and I thought the stuff I was studying was just so incredibly interesting and potentially helpful for people if I could find a way of kind of framing it in a way that can be relatively interesting and also finding a platform where that would work the best and I looked at other platforms such as YouTube, I looked at uh, I think YouTube and probably podcasting are the two most effective platforms now available. So I just, podcasting was a really intimate platform. Dude fast, I'm very good at audio editing, I can develop this myself and I can move. Uh, and the I just put it out and I was quite nervous about it to be honest because people keep thinking it's a mental health podcast. It really isn't, it's more a culture podcast because I think culture is, is becoming more and more uh, important to understand because it's having much more influence on how we feel about ourselves uh, and the impact it has on our internal kind of experience. Uh, and that's kind of what, what I want to explore, society and culture more than just health and wellness. Media, culture, the constant need to strive for perfection, this constant need to believe that this world is just this, you know, f***ing reel of highlight reels on Instagram and it's just not, it's not good. Uh, but it's mo it's the modern world so I have this other thing with the podcast that we had to say to people, listen, we can't stop technology uh, and I don't think we should because there's many such nourishing, brilliant parts of modern technology that I think are just amazing. But there's many parts of technology that do deplete us and do hurt us and do overwhelm us. What I'm say, trying to talk about is how do we teach people to deal with that and to, and to actually understand it a little bit more so it doesn't have maybe as much of an impact on them as what it could if they weren't aware of, of it. Um, I watched it. I watched it. You may not be a fan, but I know you're a fan of cooking. Oh yeah, you're not cooking meth now, are you? No. <laughs> it's just like, geez, I'm not a fan of that. I know you're a fan of cooking. Yeah. And I know that you're trying to give kids, you know, uh, like give kids, you know, a little bit of boost to teach them how to Probably cooking things like that. My kind of in the kitchen, but I'm not sure if uh, as a fan of the show you might. Use. I can't wear it on stage tonight, but yeah, okay. amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> well, I wear it for the last question. <laughs> and did, did, did any part of you watching the show always wonder what the food tasted like there? Yeah, oh man, yeah. Time. Yes. So yeah. Sort of well, no, if it doesn't have impact live, and also if it doesn't resonate, it doesn't have to resonate where people are jumping and pulling their heads off each other. It needs to resonate with someone in terms of, I get this, this is, this is, and at the end of the day, like, you, you can get caught up making music for other people, but you do have to think about people who like your music. It's important, but also you, you've got to start with the most important person, that's yourself. Are you buying this? Do you believe this? If you don't believe it, how the fuck do you expect anyone else to? And that's, that's any art. That's all the questions I have for you. Thanks a lot. Daddy, man. Thank you for my gift. No, water. Sorry, I'm a bit late. <laughs> Do you mind if I get a photo with No, at all. No, no you're definitely going to be breaking bad. I did watch it like literally three times. I better call Saul if I didn't like at all. So thankfully my hangover is gone, which is nice, and I made it in my way through the video now and I'm just after realising that I didn't record an outro, because I was too hungover. I had such a brilliant time at the Marquee by the Sea, it was really really good. The bands were awesome, it was really nice to talk to them, and the crowd there, all the people there were really nice, there was no trouble, there was no messing, everybody there was nice, everyone was there for a nice time, and it was just a really nice weekend and I'm sure there's going to be plenty more like that. I want to thank Jerry and Miles Creek and Kilkey for letting me do the video, for letting me in for both nights and talking to the band and arranging that. It was really nice of him and I know that there's going to be big plans for the Marquee by the Sea in 2020. Might be, might be potential for another video. I also recorded an interview with Liam Geddes but I didn't have time to put it into this video unfortunately. I'm going to edit all the interviews and release them separately so probably Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week I'm going to release a video and then you'd have another video from me on Friday. There's so much of the interviews that I had to cut out and I just think it's kind of a waste so I'm going to edit them together and I'm going to let you see them and they'll be up next week and they'll be like directors cut with commentary <laughs> there won't be any commentary
So yeah, that's all for me for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's not my normal type of content, but it's something that I would really like to do more of. If there's any bands out there who want to do interviews, anyone who wants me to cover an event for them, just drop me a message down below and let me know. Yeah, because I really love doing this type of content and I really hope you're enjoying it. And that is all for me for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down below. And I'll see you all again next Friday, 4 o'clock, with another video. See you then. Bye. Really wish I hadn't given away that guitar. Thank you.